Hey, welcome back to INST314, Statistics for Information Science. I'm your host, Sean Jansen. And today we're going to start the next unit module that I call Inference Part 3, Normal Distributions, Z-Scores, and Confidence Intervals. This is going to be a somewhat larger multi-part series, but it's really because we are wrapping up the whole concept of inference that I've split apart across these three sections for you. The very first part talked about the fundamentals of statistics and distributions and samples and populations to get you tied to this idea that we are starting with some group that represents a larger whole and we're trying to draw these distinctions between them. The second part started to tie you a little bit more into what are different hypotheses, what is this idea of statistical significance and things like that. And this time we're going to take this a little bit farther here and we're going to carry you into other types of distributions past the chi-square distribution you've already been introduced to. We're going to talk about directional hypothesis testing and a whole other things in this particular video series. But in this topic module 7.1 I'm going to introduce the normal distribution and a few others that you should get to know. So let's get started. Now, we said before that we're using inferential statistics to answer research questions. Descriptive statistics just really help us determine some baseline information, some basic sorts of data about a particular sample or other pieces of data if we have population data that we are working on. But when we have a sample and we want to talk back about a particular population, then we need to use inferential statistics. And in order to determine which inferential statistical method we should be using, we need to know what kind of variables we're working with. So do you have nominal variables and ordinal that are in the categorical group? Or do you have numerical variables like interval ratio, which can also be discussed as discrete or continuous? These sorts of characteristics about your variables are going to help you determine what types of distributions are most appropriate. Once you know the type of test that you're going to be working on, then you also have to figure out any assumptions you might need to know. You'll do the calculations, and then you'll go ahead and compare those test statistics you've obtained against the theoretical distributions from which they come from. That's how you help determine the critical values that are going to come from those, and several other key pieces to see if the results that you have are large enough, they're big enough, if we go back to our core questions, or if they're different enough to say that you are indeed statistically significant. Up on the screen, I am showing you a wide variety of distributions, and there are far more than we're going to cover in class today. I've put a highlight around the ones that we're generally going to talk about at some point in time, some of them in passing, some of them in much more detail as well. And so we're going to look at the uniform, the Bernoulli, the binomial, the Poisson, students T, normal or Gaussian, and chi-squared. But like I said, there are many more that we're not going to quite touch on yet. Let's talk first about the Bernoulli distribution. The Bernoulli distribution is generally characterized by just having two possible outcomes. You can think of it as a success or a failure. And success or failure doesn't always mean that you have uh, won something or lost something. It just means that you have two possible outcomes and only one of them was chosen. And the one that was not is considered a failure. Taking case the classic flipping a coin. I could flip a coin and I could get heads or I could get tails. I can get heads with a probability of p, or I can get tails with a probability of 1 minus p. There are only the two possible outcomes, and those two probabilities sum to 1, or 100% of the all possible outcomes. The uniform distribution carries us a little bit farther, and it says you still have one possible outcome here, but the chance of having that one outcome is equal across all possible outcomes. Now, I should go back and say that when we're flipping a coin, we have about a 50-50 chance if it's a fair coin. We might not always be flipping coins. We might be flipping, or not flipping, we may be doing some sort of activity that only has two outcomes, but they are disproportionate. There might be a 70-30 or a 40-60 or some other probability split. With a uniform distribution, no matter how many different possibilities there are, those probabilities are always equal. Take in point the case of a die. A die has six sides. And we, a fair die, meaning if we roll it, we'll have an equal chance of getting any one of the six sides, we have about a 1 in 6 chance, or 16.7% chance, of getting any one particular side of the die up when we roll it. Now, of course, there are possibilities out there. I'm um, sorry, not possibilities. There are things out there we can do that have different options that do not have, do, that do not have the same probability for each option out there, and those would not be uniform. If we were to 
we had seen before, if we were to plot the curve of a uniform distribution, it would just sort of look like a big box on your screen. There are no tails, because we would say as there are tails in a distribution, the probabilities of getting values under that tail become smaller and smaller. And with the theoretical uniform, everything's the same. Which carries us to the binomial probability distribution. This is uh, the first of what we call account distributions, and it is the sum of different Bernoulli trials. So you can think that if you flip a coin once, you mark down a heads. You flip a coin again, you might get a head, you might get a tail, and we'll maybe mark out another head. You flip a coin again, you will get a head or a tail. What's the chance we get another head again? And we just keep summing up the number of successes. And what it starts to do is starts to form into this binomial distribution, which has this histogram sort of look with a unimodal curve and a longer tail. Now, one of the features of the Bernoulli trials, as they're called, the Bernoulli distributions, is that all of the cases are independent. No matter what happens at, from a previous activity, it's not going to influence the current activity. So if I'm flipping a coin, when I flip it a second time, the outcome of the second flip is not going to be determined by the outcome of the first flip. And the second flip is going to have the exact same chance of success as the first flip. So if I'm flipping a coin, second time doesn't matter what happened the first time, and the second time I still have a 50-50 chance. And the way we determine where we are on the Bernoulli distribution, you count up the number of trials, n, and you multiply it by the probability of success, p. The next one we're going to look at is the Poisson distribution, which is characterized as another count distribution. And this one, unlike the Bernoulli, has a, has a different type of measurement. This one is the probability of events occurring over a given space and time, given an average rate of occurrence. So we're saying that something can happen on average, and given that average rate, we're going to see some particular event occurring over space and time. That average rate is something we define as lambda, and it is characterized to say that the average of lambda, or its mean, is equal to its variance, or standard deviation squared. And some, some examples of when we might actually see Poisson distributions are if you're waiting in line on, for say, tech support, or on hold, waiting to speak to your bank representative. It also happens in car accidents and genetic mutations. A lot of things that happen in the natural environment around us are characterized by a Poisson distribution. And that's going to go ahead and take us just to the end of our distributions here. I misspoke when I mentioned the normal. We're actually going to start the normal on the next uh, set of the slides here, and I'll see you then.